A major cyber attack on one of Iran's railway systems tried to cause widespread disruptions in the train service, and this was coming from a wiper malware called Meteor. Now, what's odd about the cyber attack is that it was supposedly done as a kind of a troll. Maybe you could call it a political trolling, because after disrupting the train service, this message uh, was displayed on the billboards. Actually, let me show you a better uh, version of it. Uh, so this message was displayed on the billboards, and I can't read this. I think it's written in Farsi, but there are two URLs that are written down here. Uh, and I think that the message is essentially telling people uh, to go to these URLs, and I guess these this is where you want to contact to get more information. Uh, so we have leader.ir, uh, which is the website for the office of the Supreme Leader of Iran. And then we have Khamenei.ir, uh, which I believe is Ali Khamenei, the Supreme Leader of Iran's own website. So it almost seems like this is done to maybe try and taunt Khamenei because obviously he doesn't want to hear from commuters that are complaining about train delays, especially when it's all a big troll. Um, now, of course, infrastructure hacking has been done numerous times, and especially if we're talking about just displaying uh, funny messages on uh, billboards or signs or whatever, uh, that's been done tons of times in the past. But usually it's some generic script kitty kind of malware that might just be generated maybe from a Metasploit module and then used to hack something that's very insecure. But no, apparently this is a new kind of malware. Well, new code more specifically, something that hasn't been seen in the wild before uh, that AV databases didn't have signatures of before. Um, so here is the attack chain uh, for this malware and how it was able to spread. Uh, so the key exploit here is in group policy, which lets them distribute a cab file with various uh, batch and executable files. Um, so we have the setup.bat, which as the name implies, that's what's setting things up. Uh, the meteor wiper, so this is uh, pretty much what's encrypting and then wiping the file systems. Um, there's also nti.exe, which isn't listed here, but that's supposed to corrupt the master boot record. Um, and then mssetup.exe is what locks the system. And down here, we actually have some snippets of code uh, provided in this security write-up. Uh, I wasn't able to find the actual source code or like the original code to test it in a virtual machine of the malware. So I don't know if that's actually been published anywhere. Um, I didn't see it on the, uh, what is it, the pad padvesh um, database either, which was the first write-up that was done of this. But anyway, this is what we got. Um, so with setup.bat, uh, we start off by setting a whole bunch of variables. Um, then we have down here the last task name, uh, which is defined right here as... Um, analyze all, which is inside the Windows Efficiency Diagnostics folder. So down here, that task is being deleted for some weird reason. Um, and then the batch file is cleaning up the components. Um, well, it's copying the components of the cab file into the network share of the Iranian railway network. Um, and once the cab file is expanded, then we have uh, here it is, update.bat. This is executed with the password hack em all, kind of like the Pokemon uh, catch em all. Um, and it's also unpacking some RAR files, so programs.rar, um, ms.rar, bcd.rar, and it does this with its own copy of WinRAR because, of course, you don't want your hacking attacks to be foiled by not having a program that can actually unpack all the RARs into the environment. Um, and apparently, Again, the password for all of these was the same, hack them all. Um, and you can see by looking at the code here, if you're a little bit familiar with batch scripting, uh, basically after all of these uh, files are unpacked and placed where they need to go, the archive is then deleted. So it looks like the developer, uh, at least of this particular script, because I think that several different uh, developers worked on this, which we'll talk about later, um, but this particular one, they really wanted to clean up and I guess not have any unnecessary files that were left behind after they served their purpose. Um, so then another script 
is executed uh, during all of this called cache.bat, which kind of acts like a minesweeper for the malware. So what this is gonna try to do is disable anything that might try and quarantine it. So first it starts off um, by invoking PowerShell to disable the network adapters. And the reason for this is typically in these kinds of systems, they're going to be centrally managed. They'll usually have a central place where logs are kept and there are often either intrusion detection or prevention systems on the network to try and prevent malware from completely taking over the device. Uh, so disabling the network card, it prevents that device from talking to those systems uh, while it's being infected. Then you can see down here, it's detecting to see if Kaspersky antivirus is installed on the machine. Uh, because I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with this, but Kaspersky actually has a really good threat detection system. Um, I've made malware before just basically using like script kitty tools like Unicorn and Metasploit and to try and test it on my own machine to try and test out uh, like remote shells and stuff like that and see if um, the antivirus that we were selling at Best Buy could actually stop it because I was able to get really cheap antivirus uh, being an employee there. But anyway, um, on my own machines or with online services, I was usually able to get past uh, most of them by encoding them different ways, but Kaspersky was almost always the one that was able to detect it. Like their detection system is really, really good. Uh, and you can actually see that if the script detects that these Kaspersky folders exist, that it's just going to stop executing uh, because I guess they don't want to even try <laughs> to deal with Kaspersky because they'll probably get detected and then this malware signature is just going to get added to their database and pretty much stopped right at the gate the next time they try to take over one of those systems uh, or any system that gets updated for that matter that's using uh, Kaspersky. Um, then finally, the uh, cache.bat, it creates a Windows Defender exclusions uh, for the rest of the malicious components that they have free roam to spread. Then bcd.bat corrupts the boot partition so that you can't reboot the machine, uh, and it clears out the event logs, security, and application logs, and it manually flushes the cache of the file system to try and clear any more tracks of what the malware has done so far. Uh, and then finally, we have the msrun.bat, which puts the Meteor Wiper in place along with a configuration file for it called msconf.conf. And it also moves some BMP and uh, JPEG files into place so that you get a lock screen uh, that looks like this, uh, I guess while the wiper is wiping your system. And then the same script will create a scheduled task called mtask to execute the meteor wiper at five minutes to midnight. So again, this is some very involved malware. It's not some well-known generic virus that was just downloaded off the internet like most of these prank attacks. Um, now, the execution and the way that some of these batch files are written as well is a bit odd. Like they appear to be written by different people if you just kind of look at the styles that are used. Um, there's all kinds of redundant error checks and debugging strings that were left in the binaries uh, when they were compiled, which seems to indicate that uh, one, it's a group of people and they are not working closely together or they don't really just have good collaboration skills um, and checks and QAs for doing a task like this. Uh, there's also additional functionality. I think it's uh, mentioned down here. Yeah, so there's additional functionality uh, that the Meteor Wiper has that wasn't even used, like the ability to uh, log encryption keys or kill processes, change passwords, and log off local sessions, which implies that this is malware that the developers intend to reuse, at least those different components of it that uh, didn't get used in this particular attack. Uh, now, fortunately, the railway system didn't really experience delays that were too major, despite putting up notifications uh, that there were long delays due to a cyber attack. Uh, 
Uh, it's still undetermined who exactly pulled off this attack. I don't think Iran has really uh, blamed anybody yet. Usually they would blame the US or Israel right away, but they haven't done that yet. Um, but it was probably, I, I don't think it would really be a state actor just because things were you know, a little bit sloppy and not really a whole lot of destruction was caused in the first place. Uh, it was probably a group with maybe intermediate malware development skills, but I would say excellent reconnaissance because they seem to have known these systems very well before they actually hit them, which is probably the biggest lesson to learn about this is watch out for people that are performing reconnaissance on your systems that are trying to figure out how they work. Uh, obviously, the passive reconnaissance is very difficult to detect, but active reconnaissance, which usually le yields more information anyway and is probably what happened to get some of this info, uh, that's a bit easier to pinpoint. Uh, so watch out for that so that hackers don't troll you and shut down your railway systems.